If you need to adjust or replace a part on your Singer sewing machine treadle, stay with me to see how easy it is to do. The treadle needs a new brace as it's broken apart here and no longer able to safely support the cabinet and the machine. This is the replacement brace and as we can see from all the joining holes, we know that we'll have to dismantle the entire treadle unit in order to swap out the broken part. This is not as complicated as it might seem though. To get started, we'll separate the treadle irons from the wooden cabinet. With the unit on the side, I'll take the stabilizing hooks off. They are screwed into the bottom side of the drawers. And if your cabinet is an especially sturdy design, you may not even have any hooks to remove. Once the hooks come off, I'll flip the unit upside down in order to access the screws that secure the treadle irons into the cabinet. There are two screws for each leg and we'll need a screwdriver with a long shaft in order to take them out. And once the four screws are removed, the entire treadle unit can be lifted out and away from the cabinet. And now I'm ready to take the legs off. Each leg is attached by two large bolts on the outer side. You may need to loosen them with some lubricant or a mild solvent like WD-40. But I found that the challenge of getting the bolts off was mainly because my flathead screwdriver was too small. I purchased a 3 8 inch size one and was amazed at how greatly they worked. Here's the broken brace with all the treadle parts stripped from it. I was surprised to discover that not only the brace was broken but the leg was as well. See how the socket for the bolt is completely shorn off? So I replaced the brace and the left leg. And here's the rebuilt treadle. Now, whether you're just making some adjustments to your treadle or you're needing to replace broken parts, here's what to watch for when taking the pieces apart and reassembling them. First, the treadle plate comes off by removing the bolts on either side of the plate using a large flathead screwdriver. And what to watch for when reassembling is Adjust your bolts so that the treadle plate is centered within the space between the bolts. Next, to separate the treadle plate completely, you will need to remove the pitman rod. This is done by rotating the bottom nut clockwise while holding the upper nut firmly in place. And what to watch for when reassembling is to avoid turning the upper nut as that one controls how freely the joint moves. So hold the upper nut firmly and then rotate the bottom nut counterclockwise. And the last major piece is the skirt guard. At the top of the skirt guard is a knob through which the treadle belt is threaded. And what to watch for when reassembling is that the loophole is aligned with the treadle wheel. See how this is positioned too far to the left? The complete skirt guard unit is attached by a nut and bolt here. So I'll simply loosen it. Realign the parts and tighten the nut. And one last thing to do as part of any adjustment routine is to apply lubrication. Grease is the best option as it does not drip, but sewing machine oil works too. I'll place a drop or two at the critical moving points, including here where the treadle plate attaches, here where the pitman rod attaches, and here where the treadle wheel attaches. The treadle unit is ready to be reattached to the cabinet. This is not the same cabinet that we took the legs off from, but the screw holes should still line up. I probably don't need to attach these stabilizing hooks as this cabinet is much more stable than the original. Recall that these hook right into the legs and then mount onto the bottom of the drawers. But I'll just reattach them to the cabinet in case they're needed at a later date.
The wood on this cabinet could use a refinish, but I'll do that at some future date. For now, this is all ready for sewing.